Hey guys, welcome back. It's Biggs. Now, I got to thank you guys. You guys give me a ton of support. I really, really appreciate it. I've had a couple of videos go out this past week that have uh, caused all sorts of controversy with people all over the place. Hey, I still think that's fun. You guys are still watching the videos. I'm not saying I'm an expert in anything. I just like bringing the stories to you guys as a form of discussion. Now today, we're going to talk about something a little bit more unique. We're going to talk about one particular species. Now the South American Amazon River is a pretty dark and mysterious place for a lot of people. They don't know about it. That's what makes it mysterious. There's all sorts of really, really cool species that come out of it. Not just fish, but plants, animals, everything you can imagine. And I'm sure there's still many, many areas and facets of it that have left to be explored. But uh, the Amazon Basin is home to a lot of amazing and unusual and extremely unique species of freshwater fish. A few come to mind like the Cardinal Tetra, Discus, Angels. All these fish are pretty, pretty important. All these fish are really, really stunning and breathtaking when set up and housed in a proper aquarium. However, in the Amazon Basin, these guys are very, very low on the food chain. The Amazon ri River is owned by the Pilmadelid catfish. Those long whiskered catfish, they truly own the river. And one species in, in particular, one very striking species in particular, may not be the biggest, may not be the baddest, but it's definitely one of the coolest, is Fractocephalus hemilopterus, known in the trade as the Amazon red-tailed cat. Fractocephalus is a monotypic genera, meaning that there is only one representative in the genus and it was formally described back in 1801 by Bloch and Schneider. The species can be found lurking in the depths of the Amazon, Orinoco, and Esquibo river basins in Brazil, Venezuela, Ecuador, Peru, Bolivia, Colombia, and Guiana. This beautiful and misunderstood catfish is often seen in pet shops the world over, and granted, the babies are very attractive. However, they tend to grow exceptionally fast and attain an exceptionally large size that even the most largest of home aquariums are completely inadequate to house them long term. They are characterized by having the large, colorful orange to red caudal fin and dorsal fins, blackish or brownish sides with a prominent white to yellowish stripe, and a single pair of large barbels on the upper jaw, as well as two pairs on the lower jaw. Red-tailed catfish can grow to almost six feet in length. Yes, six feet. That's a tall person. It's a large catfish and weigh upwards of well of 100 to 180 pounds. This is one serious fish. With a species this big also comes an incredibly voracious appetite. In the wild, their diet is comprised primarily of fish, both live and dead. They are fairly opportunistic. They will eat mussels, clams, any sort of carrion they can come across. In captivity, they are extremely easily tamed to accept fish fillets, market shrimps, clams, crayfish, etc. They would also eagerly accept most pelleted aquarium food, but due to their size, I think this would probably become exceedingly cost prohibitive. One of the absolute biggest challenges in keeping this species is actually overfeeding and a large percentage of premature deaths and captivities can usually be attributed to their diet. As the species in the wild would have to hunt and search for food over great distances versus in captivity where all they have to do is sit and wait to be fed, shrimp and other fare often have a much higher fat content than the species can actually use. Almost everyone we see in captivity or in public aquarium is sadly often very obese. This gregarious appetite not only applies to the things that are in fact food. So choosing tank mates carefully cannot be overstated. 
but also the inclusion of such regular aquarium equipment, such as heaters, the intake stems of some of your filters, rocks and decor, yes, rocks, even gravel. These are often things that would get ingested by these cats, and they're very prone to it. Sometimes these non-foo items can actually be regurgitated out, which can be just as damaging as I'm sure you can imagine, but at least it's not certain death. It is well known that the natives in the home waters of this species will generally not consume this fish. They will not eat the meat of this fish because it is one of the very few species in the world, or very much at least in the Amazon basin, it's probably the only one, that actually has dark meat. The flesh is red, very, very similar to salmon. It's very, very rare. And the natives think that this is, this is an omen, or it's poisonous, or something. But generally, they will not eat the red-tailed catfish. And it's a pretty prevalent species, and it's pretty regularly caught. Red-tailed cats are also a very much prized catch for anglers, and many people often go to Brazil to do fishing trips to catch them and the, and the prized uh, peacock bass. They have also now, through the use of hormone induction, been successful in breeding the species, not only in breeding them alone, but also creating a man-made hybrid between red-tailed catfish and the tiger shovel-nosed catfish, the sooty platostomas, with the intentions of creating a valuable food fish, getting that fast growth of the red-tailed cat with that beautiful white meat of the tiger shovel-nose was like a match made in heaven. But this thing took on the traits, the bad traits, of both species. So I can't really say whether or not the outcome was planned. However, these hive braids have actually made their way into the aquarium trade. And they take all the predatory, aggressive behaviors of each species and amplify them. At the Ohio Fish Rescue, where some of these videos were shot, uh, the biggest catfish in this giant swimming pool that Big Rich, Tracy, and Josh have is actually one of those hybrids. And he's called Tank Boss. And he's, without a doubt, has the highest feeding response out of everything in this pool. This is the one that bit me on my foot in that feeding thing. Didn't hurt, but it was a big catfish, and he was very aggressive and not shy whatsoever. Sadly, the fate of most of these gorgeous cats in captivity is grim. Too many imports, too few are properly educated, and the stores selling them are too equally poor educated, albeit very, very well-intentioned intentioned individuals whom would undoubtedly be unable to house them properly in a very, very short period of time. It is one species that may very well be left in the wild or in public aquarium displays. Very, very few people exist, such as the people at Ohio Fish Rescue, and they do some amazing things, putting everything back into the rescue they receive. However, in the case of these absolute gorgeous and giant predators, even they can only save a few. So please, I beg you, do your part, be responsible fish keepers, support your rescues, and if, if you ever do choose to keep them, Please do your research first and ensure that you can provide them with the care that they will need and they so very, very much deserve. It is a stunning species. I think they should be left in their home waters or in a public aquarium. I love seeing them. I love interacting with them. I have kept one over the years and it was a great pet. But again, I too was not prepared. For that exceptional growth. I too was not prepared for the sheer size tank that this animal would require, and I too failed. And that's not fair to the animal. The animal didn't know any better. The animal, maybe it showed me love with its whiskers when it came out, maybe it didn't care. Doesn't matter. I, as an aquarist, I failed, and that fish deserved better. 
So I try to make sure that I educate myself better. And by doing these, maybe I can educate you guys a little bit better too. And hopefully you don't have to go down that path. Hope you enjoyed this video. As always, thank you kindly for watching.